So in this brief tutorial, I'm going to show you how to store data permanently on your phone in your app using something called user defaults, which is a really handy feature to know for any app developers. So just to be very briefly, we're going to go through three areas. Firstly, how to save data into user defaults, then how to retrieve that data out, which is obviously important, and how to delete it. So shall we make a start? Well, here we are in our Xcode project. So I'm going to open up a single uh, view app here. So we've come to the storyboard here then, so I just need to put a few elements onto this to make it work. So we go to our object library here, and I've obviously used the label in the past, so we'll drag this out. I'm not really bothered about the constraints or anything, but in fact we'll make this like it's a, a, a game of some sort. So we'll put player one name as a little label. So then we need a text field underneath then to display that name, or to for the user to input their name. So we'll put a text field in there. Just underneath. Just make that a bit bigger, I suppose. Doesn't really matter. And then, of course, then we want two buttons. We want a save button and a delete button. So I'll just change that one to save, and then change this one to delete. Right. So we need to open up our view control here. Then just drag some of these elements on. And then we can start writing some of the code for user defaults. So the first thing then we'll draw our text field across. So control and drag that. And that's going to be an outlet. I'm going to just call that one player name. So create a bit more space here. Then we want two actions then for the buttons. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. That's better. My little trackpad here is not working very well. So I want this to be an action. And we'll just call this save button. And then we're going to do the same here. Control and drag across. And call this delete button. Very good. So we now have our storyboard ready and our elements ready. We can now write, start writing some code. So first off then, how to save the name. So let's just get rid of our assistant editor here and go back to our one screen, back to our view controller. And so basically we want it to be in this code here. So when the user hits the save button, we want whatever's in the player name field to save into the user defaults. So as simple as this really, it's just called user defaults dot standard dot set and on this one here it's the second one down so the value any for key string so the value is basically whatever's in the player name UI text field so I'll just put that down player name and I'll see the dot text value of that and then for the key you can just call us whatever you want and put in speech marks we'll just call this player one name which basically means is that whatever is in the player name text field, it'll save that into a key called player one name in the user defaults. Now we need to check of course it's worked. So what we'll do down here is we'll also put in a bit of code just so we can print what's in the user defaults. So print user defaults dot standard dot dictionary. Dictionary, and it's the oh, dictionary representation. Excellent. Right, so hopefully that will just save what we've put into our player one name then. So let's run that in the simulator. The build succeed, that's always a good sign. Our simulator down here. So when we go in here, we can type in so, Appy Teacher, we can press the save button and then hopefully that'll save it into the user defaults. Now, if we just redo that again, so it goes through the view did load method, and hopefully at the bottom here in the log here, we should see Appy Teacher. So, as it saved it there 
into the user defaults under the key there, player one name. So that's how to save something into user defaults. So in this section, we'll look at how to retrieve something from user defaults. Obviously, we've printed it down to the console down here. But I think most app users are not going to know about that. And of course, you want to show it somewhere on the screen. So how about we show it back into the player field then? So if there's a, a name saved in the user defaults, it will show it there, like it's remembered it. But if it's not, it'll just show it to be blank. So what to do for that then? We'll go back to our view controller, back to our view did load method. And we're going to create a variable here. We're going to call this uh, saved name. So that's obviously something that's saved in the defaults there. I've used let, because it's going to be a constant. And we can just set that then to the value of what we've put there in the user default. So again, it's standard. It's not set this time, obviously, because we're actually using it. So it's the object we need this time. And then for key, string. So that's the right one there. And the key, of course, is the same one up at the top, which I've actually spelled incorrectly. So I'll leave it as it is there. Play one name. So that should say player one name. And that should say player one name. But I'll leave it as it is there. So what we've done there then, we've just created this variable here called save name. And it's basically just whatever is saved in that key there. Now what we need to do is to stop any errors throwing up, we actually need to check if there's actually something saved in the user defaults, so it's going to throw an error up. So we can do this now. So we can create an if statement. So if let, and I'll call this player one name, is equal to that variable of saved, or create I should say, saved name. And you may be familiar with as question mark and as exclamation mark as downcast and strings and things, but we're going to for the time being, we'll just show you how to do it. A curly bracket, and then simply then it is player name, which is the text field there. The value of that we want to equal player one name, the string. So what does that mean there then? So basically We've saved, we've created a variable called save name, and we've set that equal to what's in the user defaults. And then here, we're saying we create another variable, saying, look, if something in this, if there is something in save name as string, that's great. Then we want to show that into that UI text field, and we'll just uh, show what it saved in there. Else, so we could put an el else here, of course, but there's nothing else to put really. Else, it could do something else, but we can leave that blank because it won't do anything else anyway. So let's uh, run that in the simulator and see what happens. So it succeeded again. It's going to load in. And because I've already saved in the user defaults from the last time we tried it, it should say there, look, happy teacher. So that's great. So it's remembered that there's something in there and it's now retrieve that information. So that's how you retrieve information in user defaults. So the last part here then is to how to delete something from user defaults. And it's again, it's very simple, just one line of code. So go to our delete button we created here. It's user defaults dot standard like before. This time it's not dot, dot set, but dot remove object. It's that top one there for key string. And the key of course is the same as before, play one name. It's just that one line of code. So if we run our, def our simulator again, so we had Appy Teacher saved from our user defaults before, so it should load up saying that this time, hopefully. Which it does, so it's read that there's something in user defaults, so it's displayed in that box. If we now click delete, it should delete that from the user defaults. It hasn't obviously changed the label because we haven't refreshed the page, so we'll just do that by just rerunning the simulator. That'll be the easiest way to show this. So this time we've pressed the delete button, so this time should be nothing there in user defaults. And there it's empty. So that's how you use, that's how you save, retrieve, and delete something from user defaults. Hopefully this tutorial has been useful for you. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see how that code works in practice, then click on the link in the description to this video. It goes to my Udemy course, iOS 12 App Development, where you get to build a real live app, which is live in the App Store, right from the start to the end. It's a really good course, and you get a nice discount for watching this video as well. Thank you.